Years before this mass invasion of polygons, two brothers set out to program a way to immerse someone into a colorful, non-linear interactive storybook. Rand and Robin Miller have been making black and white adventure games for kids with the Macintosh HyperCard. It made them very little money as of 1990. They wanted to break away from the kids' games and fully flesh out this grand vision. They want adults and people who don't play video games to like it. As the kids would say, they want this to appeal to normie trash. The player would have to make difficult and ethical decisions. The Miller brothers brought this lofty idea to Activision, but they said, stick with kids' games, jokers. Then the Millers were all like, we don't need you, Activision. We'll make our game anyway. Thus, Cyan Inc. teamed up with Sunsoft of Japan. Sunsoft told the brothers they want this game to fit inside the technical confines of video game consoles without dumbing the game down. Consoles have no hard drives and little memory, unlike computers. Good luck! Early 90s technology does not allow their vision to play in real-time 3D without looking flat and washed out, so they made it an interactive slideshow. Snapshots of a pre-rendered 3D world were lined up, letting the player click through it to explore and interact with objects. These objects would impact other parts of the world or reveal clues in this giga puzzle. Now my brother. Throw in some overlay videos, and you got yourself a mist. The first of its kind, released for the Macintosh in 1993, taking full advantage of the up and coming CD ROM hardware. How much should you spend on a CD ROM drive? If all you want to do is run a couple games and be able to look up a little data, that's fine. $150, $200, $250 is great. Myst was wildly successful, eventually becoming a best-selling computer game. Now it's August, 1995. Look what's launched on Saturn. That's right, it's Myst, a bestseller crammed into the confines of a home video game console. One that has so far pissed off almost everyone. This is my first time playing Myst. You're alone. You have no idea who you are, where you are, or what your goal is. Welcome to Island. Enjoy Island. This switch does nothing. A note. I need to find all the switches. These books seem important. Let's read them for about 30 minutes. Gee, I wonder if I'll need this later. Why are none of the solutions to these puzzles in these books? What do you mean, remember the tower rotation? Remember the tower rotation. Is this a time machine? Is this loss? Am I supposed to go to space? Why is this making a sound when I stop moving it? Why do I hate this game? This game is garbage. I don't get it. I'm going back to Darius. But suddenly you realize the meaning of the tower rotation. The key, the book, their purpose. You solve a puzzle on the main island and get hurled into an age. This is when it hits you like a wall of bricks. You suddenly get this full realization of how it's all interconnected. The stories, the clues, the worlds. You spend hours thinking to yourself, one more puzzle and I'm done, but no. You keep going, plunging further into the jackrabbit hole and go deeper and deeper and deeper until suddenly you look down and realize five hours of your day just f***ing vanished. And that's missed. Fun fact. At the 2013 GDC conference, Robin Miller told the audience they have no backstory for the main protagonist, or the stranger. This was intentional. They want the player of the game to feel like they are the protagonist. Sunsoft's lofty dream to port this complicated game to home consoles actually worked. The Saturn port is a nearly perfect conversion of Myst. Reviewers of the mid-90s agree. Some of them even say they're disappointed to see no graphical upgrade on the Saturn port. I'm personally impressed to see it mimic the computer game this accurately, but I guess other people don't see it that way. Everything looks and sounds great, it doesn't load too slow, and there don't appear to be any major game-breaking glitches. The only real problem with this Saturn port is using a controller to play Myst. No amount of changing the cursor speed makes dragging it along with the D-pad any easier. It's not great, but there is a solution. Myst is compatible with the Saturn Shuttle Mouse. The American version came out more than a year after Myst hit the console. So any stateside players were stuck with the controller at first, so that sucks. Pro Panda Tip! Play at the fastest speed. Under the default settings, slides transition with this slow cross dissolve. If you set the speed to 5, new slides appear as soon as they're done loading. 
Illusions of motion are cleverly shown through tiny videos. With this technique, things like environmental movement and windows and elevators can help set the scene. Watch out. Watch the... the characters of Myst typically speak to you through these live-action recordings. I have a difficult choice to make. At least one of the actors cast for Myst is one of its programmers. Developers love the Saturn's audio hardware, and Myst takes advantage of it. The incredible sound design translates perfectly. It's one of Myst's strong points. Nearly every room has their own sound cues, from mechanical workings to the ambient whooshes of its environment. They create an atmosphere really well, considering this is essentially a slideshow. Myst gave birth to the buzz phrase, video games as an art. Thanks a lot, New York Times. My TED Talk is on Wednesday. The extensive amount of production value put into Myst give you about 8 to 12 hours of enjoying a myst eerious world. It's very well done. Every little switch and button you come across are there for a reason. Like the mazes of planet Zebes. Zip, zebes, zip, zebes. It's all thought out and interconnected in some way. Mind-blowing at the time, but it's not for everyone. If you like games with action and hate puzzles, avert your hands from Myst. You'll hate it. If you're not super fond of puzzle games, but you're willing to do some thinking, at least try it out. If you get stuck, the internet is filled with well-written guides to help you out without straight up giving away answers. I definitely had to use it at least... Mm, 30 times. Chairman Segata realized the moment he fell into the fissure, the competition would not be destroyed as he had planned. The Saturn continued falling into the gaming expanse, of which Sega had only a fleeting glimpse. He tried to speculate how it might have descended the path of commercial failure, even after beating Sony to the punch. This is a great port of a great game. It's not a show of what kind of real 3D rendering the Saturn is capable of. Sega gamers craving the emerging world of Polygon games are gonna have to wait. They'll get great games by the end of 1995, but most of them are two-dimensional. Great games, but they're not what sells. New game machine. <laughs> Saturn adopters have a couple options. Hold out hope for a system not adapting well, or buy a PlayStation in one month. Hang on a minute. Gale Racer, this seems quite good. On the other hand, maybe not. It looks like a bad Mega Drive game. Sega will be pinning their hopes on conversions of their popular arcade titles, of which the awesome but tedious Virtua Fighters is only the first. The harbinger of Sega's doom is on the horizon. They may have the show-stopping Panzer Dragoon, but it's one game. One game compared to Sony's pre-Christmas lineup. Tekken, Ridge Racer, Twisted Metal, all visually miles ahead of the Saturn's Virtua Fighter and Daytona USA. Will Sega catch up, or will they die in the shadows of the fifth generation? They have a few tricks up their sleeve, hoping to recover from a sloppy launch. Don't copy that floppy. And I guess this, in fact, is the most successful entertainment product on a CD-ROM with hundreds of thousands already sold out there. That's correct. When you can take All right, now, down. we've seen animation and music so far in the battle chest. A standard cartridge, you couldn't even do this game. On a regular game cartridge. That's correct. On a normal CD, one cartridge, if you put a cartridge on CD, yeah. you could put a couple thousand cartridges a on one CD. A couple of thousand CD. cartridges equals one CD. Right. Ah, the most hateful sound had to be the bubbles. What you hear are actually uh, bubbles in a toilet. I tried big, big tubes, little tubes, sticking it way down there, you know, in the part where the trap goes down, and uh, finally got it. <laughs>